All right, we're gonna start here down in the cafeteria, and uh, Mike, what are you subjecting me to for lunch? Because this looks interesting. Well, this, of course, the food is so important to the sailors. We're starting off something a special treat for the sailors called chipped beef on toast, Ooh. which for some reason is abbreviated SOS. I feel like one of those S's isn't stuff. I'm Trevzor, and this is Talking Chip. It's actually the cafeteria is where the sailors were served after 1944. Before that period, the food was cooked in the galley up on the main deck due to temperature and fire considerations. The sailors from each of the divisions would go up there, get their food, and bring it down to their division and eat below decks. It was quite an effort. The junior man had to do the carrying of the food, and he was, oh, by the way, the last to be served after all that work. Great. Once they opened the cafeteria, the junior men were so happy they could eat much better, and they, they got some of the meat out of the stew. And if there was meat in the chipped beef on toast, they got that also. Good for them. One thing to note here is possibly that the, how does, did the food get down here? At the far end of the cafeteria, we have the uh, dumb waiter that comes down from the galley, so no longer did the food come down the ladders. Something to note here, though, is a good look at the decks and color coding being so important. The color on these decks is unique. But okay. it's there for, as everything else is, for a very proper purpose. That is in case in combat there's blood flowing, it won't be a morale issue for the sailors. So red is very strategically chosen. It, it was done with malice aforethought. <laughs> Other color codes, you'll see the green valve. That's firefighting water. Uh, other colors you'll see will be yellow stripes on vents. Sure. That means vents, fresh air. Around us always are firefighting hoses, axes, extenders for the firefighters. Sure. Uh, we have a Stokes litter here in case someone's injured to carry out someone on a litter. Color is so important throughout the ship. Okay. And I hear you're going to take us on a tour a little bit farther down Main Street. What else have we got, got well, going on here? Well, our first stop is going to be going through the marine facilities here. Okay. Marines as in like Marine the Sea or Marine as in fighting I, men of the Navy? United States Marine Corps. Wow, look I've at this. I've got to say it, this, uh, with the Marine uh, birthday, that's very important to mention that, but this is where the Marines were. Their jobs were to protect the ship's captain, to uh, take care of the brig, to man up certain of the guns. Most important, you can see we do have their M1s here. Wow. If the ship ever found a floating mine, their job was to line the decks and shoot the floating mine. That, no does record. that work? Uh, I, they never tested the theory. Okay, okay, so it was just to make them feel better, maybe. It's, it's good gunnery practice. All right, fair enough. I like Marines. that. As we move further down, okay. notice there are no, there's no wasted space anywhere. Not at all. The there's, there's a lot 19, of cots. It looks like there's people who are going to be sleeping everywhere. Well, the original 1914 crew of 1,000 men grew to 1,800 by World War II. So there were bunks everywhere. For example, right here is a dispensary. Okay. Uh, we have people sleeping in the dispensary where they worked. Wow. Uh, directly across from the dispensary is the Auxiliary Common Information Center. Totally separate from medical, but the spaces are used. They fit where they fit. The main combat information center, of course, being up just below the navigation bridge. Okay. Back up for everything. We move further along to the operating room. Uh, main problems that we had on the ship were shipboard accidents and various venereal diseases, to be very frank. <laughs> That's what got taken care of here. S sailors being sailors. Sailors being sailors, anchors away, and all of that. <laughs> but from here, right across the way, around this corner, okay. we have the barber shop. Wow. For it's got 25 three chairs. This, this is more chairs than I have in my local barbershop. <laughs> but sailors had to stay squared away. Uh, they tried to let their hair grow a little bit longer to go on liberty, but that never really worked for them. The favorite place on the ship for any sailor had to be the soda fountain. Wow. Here we are. I love it. For a dime, you could get your Coca-Cola made right out of the syrup. They would make ice cream out of dehydrated milk, and serve it up right here. It was Kind of an interesting point, though, is that everything on the ship, including the soda fountain, is aimed towards fighting the ship. We stand here. This is Main Street America. Sure. Within arm's length right here is the barbette for turret number four. We've so, got Main so, Street America so you're telling me that there's soda here, 
and there's shells here. And so no one will forget what the purpose of the ship is, is so these men are ready to man up those guns. Wow. So it all, it's all for that purpose. That's, that's super impressive. I like that. Uh, as we move back, of course, we have the ship's store. You need magazines, writing material, Great. tobacco. It's right here. Awesome. And more sleeping space. And more sleeping space. You'll see it everywhere. You all just notice right above me is a table. You haven't seen any tables. Where would people eat their meals? There's no room. The tables are taken down, set up for meals, playing cards, wow. whatever else might go on, and then put right back up again. This is, this is almost like very college-centric. Like This is a <laughs> dorm room for 1,800 people. And I imagine there are more than a few comparisons there. <laughs> uh, we do have the tailor shop right here. Uh, for putting on uh, repairing uniforms, putting on insignia, whatever else might need to be done. Uh, some things we talk about the uh, necess necessity of birthing space, how short it can be. We even have yeah. births right behind you. Right, right here, right? And then you look up above us at these hooks in the overhead. Sure. Those are for hammocks. The more junior people got to sleep in hammocks. So it's, it's not good to be new to the Navy. No, that's a little <laughs> tough on the back. A little tough on the back. It that's... Is. that's Amazing, and these are not large. Like, I'm 5'10". I feel like if I laid on this, either feet or head are off the edge of this thing, and that's probably gonna be pretty miserable. It would be, but you're so tired after a long day or night on the ship. You just don't even care. You just, you just flop right in and you do go to sleep. Wow, that's, that's, I uh, guess, yeah. How, like, these are really high up and I don't see well, anything to really climb on these, like, well, so, this is it right here. Now, of course, these will lay down flat. You take the, take the hook off, they'll sure. lay down flat, but then you just climb right up the edge. Wow. The man on the bottom gets stepped on. All the time, right? Constantly. <laughs> uh, and if the sea is very rough and someone above you starts becoming seasick, Ugh. also not good. Uh, no, thank you. Across from us, getting from that subject quickly, across from us is the ship's uh, post office. Wow. You'll notice a couple of bunks in there. Yeah. The postal clerks live in there. The only things that came aboard without being inspected was the locked postal bags. So you might think that would lead to a certain amount of black marketeering coming aboard. I kind of sound I would, feel like that is. It, uh, the, the sailors are sailors. How, how often would you get post it, on a warship? It depends on how often you run into a ship that's coming from a shore station out because everything is scheduled. If, you know, if a ship knows he's coming out and it's going to be meeting the Texas, they will load up their mail in the port. South Pacific Island, for example, uh, a British port going over to Europe, and it's all very carefully coordinated. That's people realize that's a, such an important issue for the sailors. Yeah, so, get, get some letters from home. Absolutely, great. Uh, the, the one more spot we'll stop at up here will be sure. the dentist office. You had a shipboard dentist. We had a full-time shipboard dentist. Okay. And those of you who might be interested in having your tooth worked on, this is where it's done. Wow. That's uh, that's not as nice as my dentist's office, but it, I bet it I bet it did wonderful things for the people who were in a lot of pain. They were, and like myself, I at one point thought about going to dental school. I didn't want to be a dentist. I just wanted to be on the a drill team. <laughs> uh, but there we have a quick review of Main Street. Fantastic! Thank you so much, Mike. That was great information. My pleasure. Awesome, and thank you guys for watching. This has been Talking Ship. Good luck, fair seas, and we'll see you out there. Remember, everybody, Battleship Texas needs your help. Yes, come visit her or go to our website, battleshiptexas.org, battleshiptexas.org.